So the Lakers season is over and now we enter into an off season for them where they have really more questions than they have answers. They know that they have LeBron. They know that they have Anthony Davis and really the rest of the roster is completely up in the air. And this next statement is one that I honestly can't believe I'm saying, but the biggest priority this off season for the Lakers is retaining Austin Reeves. Like he has been unbelievable for this team, especially in the second half of the season. And they would not have gone as far as they did in the postseason without his contributions. He had multiple 20 point games in the playoffs he's shooting well from three he at least gives effort when he tries to guard defensively and when you have a player like that that can facilitate and can score can defend a little bit around LeBron that is unbelievably valuable now there's a little bit of a weird situation with his free agency where he's a restricted free agent and the Lakers can't offer him like a huge contract extension up to like I think 50 something million he's going to earn more than that but they can match anything and I honestly think that priority one for the Lakers short of a team offering Austin Reeves like a hundred plus million dollars is going to be to make sure that they retain him that they match any offers that they bring him back because I really think that for the second part of the year there were moments where Austin Reeves was clearly their third best player a roster that includes other you know highly touted guys like Rui Hachimura and D'Angelo Russell he was their third best player he needs to be retained speaking of D'Angelo Russell this is where things get a little bit weird in terms of how the Lakers are going to build their roster this offseason he's a free agent and at times the partnership has looked pretty good like at times it's kind of similar to what happened with Austin Reeves where he can score a little bit he could shoot the ball he can facilitate but then there are other times where he just should not be on the floor. And I think given no other options, I think the Lakers would like to bring back D'Angelo Russell. I think they'd rather not just lose him for nothing. I think he was a relatively critical part of the midseason trades that they made. And certainly credit to the Lakers front office for making those moves. But the work is far from done going into this offseason if you want to continue to try and be a contender. And I think D'Lo is at the top of that list. Given no other options, I think D'Lo is going to be back on the roster next year. But I think they are really, really going to explore multiple different different avenues here there's a there's a Kyrie Irving sign and trade that works relatively cleanly here between Russell and Irving if the Mavs just want to get some kind of value out of Irving make sure that they have a guard that they can play alongside Luka going into next season even if D'Lo of course is not on the same talent level of Irving maybe just the uncertainty around Kyrie if you're Dallas you'd rather have D'Lo in that situation and the Kyrie and LeBron stuff until we find out where Kyrie is playing next year is always going to be a threat those rumors have kind of picked up once again recently would not be surprised at all not only to see those rumors continue but to see Kyrie in a Lakers uniform next season and in terms of the other guys it's kind of similar to when they won the title in the bubble there's just a couple of guys that are really critical to their team that help them that are going to be free agents Rui's going to be a free agent uh Dennis Schroeder is going to be a free agent and trying to figure out which of, of that core four guys to keep between Schroeder Reeves uh D'Lo and Rui again all of which helped them uh, most of which they acquired mid-season it's going to be really difficult to figure out exactly which of those guys to keep, and it's going to depend largely on whether or not they bring in Kyrie Irving because the, the contract aspect of that really limits their ability to bring back all of those guys. I would encourage them to bring back Reeves and Rui as, you know, the main priorities of the offseason. I think both of them really help them, and then we'll kind of see what happens with the Kyrie thing. Now, I do want to make one thing clear on the Kyrie thing. Because of these moves that they made in the middle of the year, they're not going to be able to bring in Kyrie as a free agent. It's going to have to be a sign and trade situation. There was a scenario in which if they hadn't made the moves that they did at the deadline, they could have gone into the offseason with a significant amount of cap space. That's no longer a thing. They have Malik Beasley on a team option that they could turn down. It's about $16 million. They have Mobamba on a non-guaranteed deal that they could, you know, buy him out. They can create some cap space if they waive their rights to bring back Reeves, Rui, and D'Lo. But they're not going to do that because then they're just going to be giving away basically half their team to bring in someone like Kyrie Irving and Reeves as I mentioned in the beginning I think is going to be a big priority for them so it has to be a sign and trade if they're going to bring in Kyrie free agency cap space in a significant way is really not a thing for the Lakers and the reason that all of this is important to me at least is you have to think about this in the context of LeBron's career. Clearly, when you're trading away the 2027 first round pick, you're still trying to contend while LeBron is there. You have some other future first round picks you could trade as well. And it's interesting that that's the mindset because this could be LeBron's last year as a Laker. If Bronny does well in college and he comes to the league the following season, LeBron has said openly that he wants to play with this kid and if the Lakers don't select him, if the Lakers don't find a way to get Bronny, depending on when he does come to the NBA, this year or the following could be LeBron's last year as a Laker. He could go somewhere else, request a trade, do all these different things to try and play with this kid. And that's really important because even as good as everybody else was around LeBron and at times he did look old in the postseason, when you have Anthony Davis and you have LeBron, I think this team has proven 
that at this point, if they're healthy, that is still at least a borderline championship contender. You still are going to be heard from if the rest of the roster is kind of decent, can score and defend a little bit. And when you're thinking about the context of this group and how this season ended, continuing to retain those core two guys together, especially in terms of keeping them together and making sure Anthony Davis doesn't start thinking about going somewhere else anytime soon is really, really critical. And I think is the main goal of the offseason. Continue to build a contender around AD and LeBron, even if it looks different, even if D'Lo is not there, even if Ruby's not there, retain Austin Reeves, maybe you get Kyrie, whatever the case may be. There's a proof of concept here from this postseason run that says that AD LeBron, when healthy, even at this stage of LeBron's career, is truly a contender. And I honestly, earlier in the season, did not know if that's where this team stood. And these midseason trades, of course, changed that completely. As I mentioned earlier, they still have future first round picks to trade. It's the Lakers. They're always going to have interest in terms of teams, or in terms of, excuse me, young players or older players that are going to want to join, like Lonnie Walker last year, just randomly decided to take probably less money to come to the Lakers. Older guys chasing veteran or chasing championships. Like that stuff's going to happen if you're the Lakers. They have that benefit. And you never know what's going to happen with them in terms of chasing stars and trading away future picks and things like that but everything that they do this offseason in my opinion should be about building this team in the image of this most recent team because not only did they make an incredible postseason run but once they made those deals and guys got healthy they're one of the best teams in the league and I think that's something that they can replicate next year and again going with kind of that that bubble championship team kind of mindset with guys that work well around LeBron and AD and let those guys power you through a postseason run retain Reeves add some shooting if you want to add Kyrie sure that's fine whatever the D'Lo spot is just another scoring guard that can take some pressure off LeBron kind of eat up some some of the scoring load during the regular season all that stuff is going to be really critical. Continue to build the team in in this kind of uh, of mindset. And then I'll just end here. Um, even though the Lakers season did not get them all the way to the finals, I, I'm going to take a little bit of an L on this one. I said multiple times during the season that I didn't think that they were championship contenders. I liked the moves at the deadline. I gave them an A grade for their moves at the deadline. I thought, you know, it was really, ironically, I was really excited about Malik Beasley in terms of the spacing he would provide, and he barely mattered at all to the postseason run. And even after I gave them an A+, I still didn't think that it was a contender. I didn't believe in this concept that LeBron and AD were going to be healthy throughout the entirety of the postseason. And you could argue that had LeBron been healthier towards the end of the year dealing with the foot injury and things like that if we had the version of LeBron that was playing in in January earlier in the year before the all-star break maybe they would have made the finals maybe they would have won a title uh, it's it's weird to see a team change so dramatically and me change my opinion on them so dramatically in just a span of a few months but getting rid of Russell Westbrook and the impact of that is something that I really underestimated as well as bringing in all these other pieces and uh yeah I'm gonna take the L on that even though their season is now over and they didn't make the finals they they pretty easily could have depending on who they matched up with within the conference finals as well as you know LeBron's health and things like that and uh shout out to the Lakers man like I did not think that this kind of year was coming for them and I cannot wait to see what decisions they make this offseason